Um, hi guys, we're going to do a question now uh, on um, a polygon of forces or a few forces acting at the same time and we're going to add them all together to see what we have at the end. And this is slightly different from the the questions we've been doing so far in the sense that uh, at least in this in this uh, s set of videos we've been doing uh, one real force and then splitting it into into components where that was the force F and the components that you were interested in were at right angles so this would be if that was theta this would be F cos of theta wow theta and this would be F sine of theta and uh, and that's it once we split them up that was our answers and we would leave it like that even when we did the question on the slope we had that the weight was going like that and we wanted to split it up into perpendicular to the slope and down along the direction of the slope and this was then theta which was uh, we discussed why that was the same angle as this and so if this was w and that was your full force then this would be w cos theta and this was w sine theta so that's the triangle that we used and here we were doing the same thing as here just at a different in a different direction we were getting one force and we're splitting it up into don't worry if this looks confusing because we'll do so much practice with this that in a week or two you'll find these much much easier so don't panic about those and uh, in this one here we're going to do something slightly different because we don't have one uh, force which we then uh, well the, the our final answer won't be when we manage to split them up we do have to split them up first the forces but then we have to uh, add them uh, and then get a final result. And so the question gives us a, a, th a set of three forces. One of them is uh, going at this angle, maybe a bit less. A bit like that. And this uh, it gives it the letter Q. And uh, then there's another one here going um, a bit more like that uh, vector r and then this one that goes straight down from here from the origin straight down and this it calls it p so you've got these three forces and they tell you that this is angle q and this is angle r and with the and, and this is the origin here o and they say they act on a particle at rest so uh, particles here in the center and they're all acting on that particle at rest and it says by fi first finding the components of each force along OX and along OY, uh, OY and uh, wow I think it's the first time I ever do that it's pretty impressive completely flip them over must be having a dyslexic day x and y by splitting the, these in the components along ox and along oy find the magnitude of the resultant force and the angle it makes with ox so at the end they're asking us for the angle it makes with ox o is here and x is there so imagine that our resultant is here at the end then they're asking us for that angle there right as well as the as well as the magnitude so um we get rid of this guy also because he's not doing anything useful um, let's see so how do we do this the easiest way to do it for well first we need to read what the p uh, what the angles are because without it we can't do it and without the magnitude so the question says uh, let me see um, assume that p is 5 newtons so p is this one down here so that would be 5 newtons q is 4 newtons 4 newtons and r is 3 and then they give us the angle so q is 20 degrees and r is 40 degrees okay and they need to tell us all of the information because this particle uh, that we want to find out the, the resultant at the end it would be different if they asked us uh, hey this is in equilibrium and then find out uh, this mystery angle for it to be in equilibrium then you need to cancel everything out and make sure that they all add up to zero 
but this is not the not the case here. It's not in equilibrium. It's going to accelerate in some direction. So our job is to find out what direction is the resultant going to act in, and also what's the magnitude of the resultant. And this could be in any direction. At the end, it could be like that or like that. We don't have, we have no idea. So uh, the best way to do that is to uh, split these guys up in components. And now that we've got the angles and the sizes, then we can do it quite easily. Uh, so let's let's see. The I'm going to do the horizontal components in yellow and the vertical components in blue, just because. Just because. Okay, and if that's four newtons, and that's twenty degrees. Then we're getting more practice in these lately so it should be no surprise to you if I tell you that uh, the x component of that force is just going to be 4 times cos of 20 and so we've already taken into account the horizontal part of Q and now we go to this one and we say what's the horizontal part of this? nothing because it's pointing straight down there's none of this it's not diagonally like that or diagonally like that there's nothing about this force that it's going to help me go in that direction or in that direction, right? It's just pulling me down, so it's it's completely useless to the horizontal motion. But this one has a horizontal motion and it's going in that direction. Uh, and if x is increasing that way and y is increasing that way, then this is positive and that's positive. So we need to take that into account when we add them. And so the uh, horizontal part of R here is going to be the full 3 times cos of the angle 40 cos because it's the adjacent here so that will be 3 cos 40 plus 3 cos 40 but since it's going to the left and x increases to the right we've got to be careful here and actually say hey this is going to be negative 3 cos 40 so the actual uh, thing is going to look like minus 3 cos 40 and that's going to be our total when we've added up all of the horizontal movements then this is going to be our total vector in the horizontal direction so another way of saying this is resolving in the horizontal direction that's what happens okay and I'll calculate that uh, this in a second and uh, write the answer underneath and now let's do the the vertical direction vertical direction would be everything that's going up or down. So let's start with Q. Q is 4 times the opposite here. We're interested in this side of the triangle, so that's 20, that's the opposite. So this would be 4 sine 20. So resolving in the vertical, 4 sine 20 uh, would be the contribution of this one to the vertical direction, and it would be positive because it's going up, and Y increases up, as this arrow shows, and then uh, this one here, R, would be 3 uh, opposite uh, again of 40, so 3 sine 40 plus 3 sine of 40. And finally, the vertical contribution of uh, P would be the full 5. All of it is going down, right? All of it is going down. So whilst only a part of this is going up and a part of that is going up, and the other part is going sideways here, shown by the yellow, all of this is going down, so we can just say minus 5, the full 5, and it's minus because it's going down. And so now let's uh, grab a calculator and do these and see what we get for the final uh, sideways and the final up and down vectors. So 4 times cos of 20 minus 3 cos of 40, I get a positive 1.46. 1.46 uh, and I'm gonna uh, write down a bunch more of numbers because to remind myself that I've got to use the full number uh, when I use this number again so this is the uh, component horizontally that says 606 and but I really I want to use the full number the full number so I'm, I'm gonna save that in my memory and uh, use it later and now in blue uh, we want 4 sine of 20 plus 3 sine of 40 minus 5 is equal to minus 1.70355 blah 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 um, 
So these are two uh, forces. So that what that means is that then when we add them, we have in the horizontal direction positive 1.46. I'm gonna in the diagram. I'm just gonna round it up. Positive uh, 1.46 newtons, and in the vertical we have negative 1.70355. So negative. 1.70 newtons and so we need to uh, then the difference between the questions we've done before is that we got one force and we split it in components and that was it once we managed to split it into components like here we, we split them in well this was uh, after adding but uh, the questions we've done before we had a force and we just split them into components and that was it that was uh, question done here once we've split them into components then we've added them to see what their uh, overall effect is and then finally when we've got the overall effect in both directions we need to add them together to get a final resultant which is going to essentially summarize all of these forces and tell us what the real uh, combination of them uh, is and so to solve this guy here we just need to make a rectangle and find the diagonal. That's not a very well drawn diagonal. Find the diagonal. So the diagonal would be if this is our resultant R, then R would be R squared is equal to uh, the yellow squared plus the blue squared numbers. And to get R, we do the square root of both those. And uh, just done that in my calculator, and it comes out to. 2.24 newtons for the resultant so this guy here would be 2.24 newtons to three significant figures and uh, we haven't finished yet because the question asks us not only for the magnitude of the resultant of all of these together but it also asks, asks us for the angle to the OX right so if OX is this and the resultant that we've just found is down here down here then we are asking us for uh, for this angle. And it's very important we say at the end that it's below the horizontal. So you've got to say if this angle turns out to be 20 degrees, we have got to say 20 degrees below OX, right? So it doesn't think it's above. Even though from the diagram it's obvious, we should always say it. So we've got this. Uh, these two sides and we have this ang uh, angle that we want to find which is theta and we've got the opposite and the adjacent instead of using this one I'd recommend you use the full answers that you have already and so the opposite and the adjacent is tan from Toa so tan theta is equal to the opposite which is 1.70 make sure you use the full number uh, divided by 1.46 and the angle uh, turns uh, then would be theta is equal to shift tan of that, which comes out to be in 49.4. Actually, uh, better than saying 49.4 theta, uh, you know, theta is 49.4 below OX, and this is OX here. It's better to say because these angles are normally measured from here and they're measured like that anti clockwise, it's better to say that uh, resultant is. Um, 2.24 newtons, 49.4 degrees, but this is a minus minus angle. 49.4 degrees will be our angle, negative 49.4, or positive it would be all of this way around. Uh, but that would be fine. 49.4 negative with a magnitude of 2.24 newtons. Right, so that would be our, our final answer for that. So hopefully that makes sense uh, and. Um, I just wanted to mention one more thing. In this question, they ask us for the final answer with respect to the OX, but uh, they could ask us for the same thing with respect to any other line. So we just at the end we need to look at uh, what we've done. So for example, we could have a final result. We could have our initial vector that's here and there and here, and our final resultant could be here. Uh, and they ask us for the final vector uh, angle. With respect to maybe maybe this guy here down, so then they ask us for this, so then we just need to to calculate that angle instead of the other one, or they could ask us for that angle here. Okay, so just check in the question when you read it what angle they ask you for, but uh, essentially the process is the same for everything else. Uh, it's exactly the same. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.